Welcome to World Med School. My name is Mario Arvillone and I am Professor of Global Health at the University of Milan. Previously, I was Director of the Global Tuberculosis Program at the World Health Organization. In this lecture, what I will do is to introduce to you the uh, global burden of uh, tuberculosis and all the uh, statistics, the estimates that are uh, uh, produced annually by the World Health Organization. And uh, to begin, just uh, showing to you the data sources. So what are the estimates based on? In the countries in blue, for example, which have notification systems that are reliable, uh, they rely on case notification and expert opinions and uh, case notification and standard adjustments. Then uh, you have inventory studies, you have uh, prevalence surveys, you have uh, uh, country-specific dynamic models uh, that really uh, look into these uh, numbers and try to come up with the, uh, an incidence estimate. And this is what uh, they give us, essentially, that uh, there, are, there are or there were in 2022 some 10.6 million cases of tuberculosis, of which some 6.3% uh, uh, linked with HIV and more than 400,000 multidrug resistant cases. On the right, you see the estimates for the deaths, which are uh, considered to be 1.3 million back in uh, 2022, with uh, all the other numbers that you you can see there, I want to just show you that uh, uh, the last row um, assumes the numbers uh, of uh, a, a people infected latently with tuberculosis that are estimated to be nearly 2 billion. Because of these numbers, tuberculosis is now considered uh, not anymore in the list of the top 10 causes of death worldwide, uh, thanks to, in fact, a 30% reduction between 2000 and 2019. Uh, so this is quite important as an achievement. Uh, the causes of that, however, must be seen on the basis also of the economic conditions of a country. So these are uh, countries classified according to the World Bank, low income on the left, high, in high income on the right, and middle income in, <clears throat> in the middle. And what you can see here is that tuberculosis, as a matter of fact, is, uh, be is uh, belongs to the top 10 causes of death uh, for the low income countries. And in Importantly, the seven uh, cause of that in lower middle income countries that are quite a remarkable number of uh, 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 population, uh, high population countries. It then disappears from the uh, top 10 in the upper middle and in the high income countries. This is the map of the world that shows the incidence of TB. These are incidents per capita, incidence rates per capita. And what you can see is the dark color that uh, belongs to countries with a very high incidence of TB are essentially concentrated in Africa and in Southeast Asia. All of these then looked at uh, uh, from a different perspective, that is the, 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 the total number, show you quite clearly that the majority of cases are in fact in Asia between the Southeast Asian region and the Western Pacific region that includes China, the Philippines and so on. Uh, and you can see on the right uh, how the distribu distribution is today. Now, there are eight countries that are responsible for two thirds of all cases in 2022, and you can see very clearly what they are on the right. India is number one, is a more than a quarter of cases in the world, and Indonesia, China, Philippines, and Pakistan, the top five are Asian countries. Then you start having some African countries like Nigeria in position six and Congo in position, DR Congo in position eight. Um, when it comes to the TB associated with HIV burden, well, the largest is clearly in Africa. This is uh, shown as HIV prevalence in people with tuberculosis. How many are seropositive, HIV positive? And what you can see here is that the majority are in fact, uh, or the highest levels are in fact in Africa and in the former Soviet countries, some like Russia, Ukraine, and so on. Um, importantly, uh, we, we have to look at the uh, global trends in incidence and rates between 2000 and 2022. And what you notice here on the left is the million of cases and on the right the rates per 100,000. What is important is that there was a decline, slow decline that goes going between 1 and 1.5% 1 per year that actually was 
halted in 2020 when the incidence started increasing. Clearly, the consequence of what you see below the curve of the notifications that dropped dramatically in 2020 linked to COVID and the disruption of services to start then increasing again later on, which means essentially that there were ca cases missed from the systems and therefore transmitting to others and dying potentially. Um, the uh, data sources uh, that I was mentioning at the beginning include also prevalence server. I just want to show that uh, in this particular slide that there are many countries, many important high burden countries that have been now surveyed for the prevalence of disease. And that is what shows then in this, uh, in this map. And, and that is, what's also what is also what informs the incidence estimates. When it comes to the trends in TB notifications, uh, I mentioned already the major impact that COVID 19 had, and you can see that much better in this uh, enlarged uh, portion of the incidence trends over the past uh, several years. And you see what happened. The case notifications were increasing quite uh, significantly before, which is great. That means that national programs were able to um, uh, essentially detect and report cases. But then there was a major drop, something around 18% between 2019 and 2020 caused by COVID, and then a resuming of the curve that you can see here in 21 and 22. That is valid essentially for most of the regions worldwide. You can see on the right the regional graphs. And that corresponds to what WHO now estimates having been a, uh, um, a number of excess deaths that corresponds to about 0.5 million. So it's really something uh, major. The impact that COVID had it was something major in the world of tuberculosis. Um, I mentioned the prevalence of confirmed TB cases, and I just want to show you that uh, uh, this is what uh, has been found in those uh, particular uh, countries, uh, that is a prevalence that is extremely high in Africa, reaching e nearly a thousand cases per hundred thousand. And you see that the majority of cases here, Zambia, Tanzania, Lesotho, Kenya, have extremely high uh, uh, prevalence rates. A similar situation is uh, also in uh, the case of Asia. And you can see here the Philippines exceeding a thousand. So that means 1% right, of the population being affected by TB during the survey. And then Cambodia, and Indonesia, and Myanmar, etc., etc., having extremely high prevalence. This is a very good uh, starting point for the estimate then of incidence. When it comes to mortality, there are essentially a number again here of data sources. A majority of countries in blue, uh, what you see in blue, are those where there are vital registrations available. And vital registrations mean that we can have a pretty clear idea of the uh, situation. When we don't have that, then there are indirect estimates, like in most of Africa. Uh, TB mortality, uh, the map shows a similar, a, situ a similar situation to what uh, you see in the case of incidence. So the highest rate uh, of mortality are in fact in the African continent in South East Asia. And what you see in absolute terms, you can, you can see that on the right, in the pie uh, graph on the right, the majority of deaths occur in Southeast Asia, followed by Africa, which has 27% when the incidence is about 24% of uh, all cases. It means that in Africa you die uh, more than in other continents because probably of HIV and because probably of the systems that are not as uh, uh, developed as they, they, they might be in other parts of the world. In terms of est uh, estimates of the mortality trends, you see on the left the millions, you see on the right the uh, rate per capita. And like it happened in the case of incidence, the, uh, uh, the mortality rate was coming down at 2-3% per year nicely to then interrupt this trend in 2020 because of the disruption of the system caused by COVID and to zoom the trend by the way in the last uh, year, which is Good, but that means also that there, there will be a delay in reaching the targets that have been set previously. When it comes to multidrug resistant tuberculosis, this is the uh, number of uh, uh, cases of MDR or rifampicin resistant TB out of all uh, new cases. And what you can see very clearly is that the uh, countries that have the highest percentages worldwide are those illustrated there. Belarus that may reach 30 5, 38%, Russia in the range of 35, Moldova 33%, and so on. It means one case out of three in that part of the world can be multidrug resistant. And when it comes to the absolute numbers, what you can see here of the 410 
thousand cases estimated in 2022. The top eight countries are those India, Philippines, Indonesia, China, Pakistan, Myanmar. These are the countries with the absolute numbers, uh, um, the highest absolute numbers of uh, um, MDR TB cases. And you see the percentages there, one quarter are in India, although India is a relatively low percentage, but the huge number of cases uh, in total then give you that 27%. Um, the trends on multidrug and drug-resistant TB are important to be understood. In 2022, the, uh, as I mentioned, the um, um, incidence, uh, the number of cases that emerge is in the range of 410,000 and 160,000 were fatal, meaning there are deaths. And when we look at the estimated number of cases uh, and their trends from 2015 to 2022, you see essentially a line that is slowly uh, decreasing and possibly flattening a bit more during the past uh, couple of years. You can see that even better here. Here you have the cases with no Easter of TB, so uh, basically uh, new cases. And here you have cases previously treated of TB. In both situations, the trend is slightly Slightly downward, and that is important to understand when you know people say uh, multidrug resistant TB is now really increasing. Well, that's not the case globally. It might instead be the case on a more local or national level. And what you can see here in green are countries that are really coming down, like China, like Nigeria, like Pakistan. If I go there, you see other like uh, Russia and so on that are actually showing a downward trend. There are countries instead in red showing an upward trend, like for example, Kyrgyzstan or Kazakhstan or Myanmar or uh, if you like Vietnam and so on. So uh, this is the kind of situation. So let's uh, be precise when we claim that the multidrug resistant tuberculosis is going, is going, uh, is increasing, is going uh, up, uh, which is not exactly the case globally. It might be uh, nationally. So, um, and uh, uh, following that, I just want to mention the situation related to the uh, targets, uh, the international TB target that have been set in a number of different occasions. Well, number one is the NTB strategy 2016-2030 or 2035, depending on what we want to look at. The SDGs that in a way uh, um, uh, reconfirm the NTB strategy and then the high level meeting at the UN General Assembly in two occasions. This is uh, the uh, specifics uh, um, of the targets, the SDG target 3.3 that simply speaks about ending the epidemic, but adopting then the WHO NTB strategy target that you can see described there, 80% reduction in incidence rate and 90% reduction in the annual number of TB deaths. How do we stand in terms of this uh, achievement well if you look at the baseline of 2015 which is the starting point on the left uh, you have the incidence on the right you have the number of deaths and you have seen already this graph uh, it simply show you that uh, uh, there has been a decline between 2015 and 2022 but it is very uh, small decline and certainly these targets are not on track not, not only but in the case of incidence rate you can see an increasing trend because of the COVID disruption. And this is shown uh, for, and this is the, the figure that shows essentially the uh, level of achievement in the targets uh, uh, set by the UN General Assembly for 2022. Uh, and also on top left here, the end TB targets I just mentioned. The others are the target of the UN uh, uh, General Assembly. The only target that has actually been reached by 2022, it was set in 2018, is this one, is the people living with HIV being uh, administered prophylaxis against tuberculosis preventive treatment. Uh, otherwise, all the other tracks have and uh, targets have not been reached. So I come now to the sl last slide of the conclusions. Uh, we can say the following, the TB burden remains very high and TB is uh, clearly the top infectious killer now that COVID-19 seems to have slowed down. COVID-19 had a major impact on incidence and that trends. The global targets part of the NTB strategy are simply not on track. As a matter of fact, incidence going up rather than going down. Uh, it might actually change next year. The UN General Assembly targets 2018-2022 were not reached except for, I just mentioned that, the uh, preventive treatment for TB in people living with HIV. 
MDR uh, and repampicin resistant tuberculosis are stable globally, but, cons but uh, they, they, they impact in a major way in some countries, as I said uh, uh, in, uh, during this presentation, in the former Soviet countries. There is an urgent need of accelerating the TB response and the multi-sectoral accountability framework developed by WHO is fundamental and inevitable. Thank you very, very much.